In this presentation, we will take a look at some multiple choice questions related to cash and internal controls. First question, preparing a bank reconciliation on a monthly basis is an example of A, a required procedure by law. It's the law. Martial law. B, separation of duties. <gasps> Jury duty. C, Protecting assets by providing the accuracy of cash records. Records? By proving the accuracy of cash records. D, a waste of time. Or E, uh, poor internal controls. So we'll go through these one more time, see if we can eliminate some of the options with the process of elimination. Preparing a bank reconciliation on a monthly basis is an example of either A, a required procedure by law. Now, typically, it's not really required by law. Uh, it might be for, for publicly traded companies, uh, but to be in compliance and be part of the, the internal control process for then the audit process, but not typically for non-publicly traded companies at least. So I'm going to say it's not really a requirement. It's usually something the company would want to do. So I'm going to eliminate that. B says the separation of duties, preparing a bank reconciliation. Now, that's maybe a part of the separation of duties process. But I don't think it's a separation of duties necessarily just to create the bank reconciliation. If we had uh, a different person doing it and they were explaining that in the question, then it would be. C, protecting assets by providing the ac uh, accuracy, by proving the accuracy of cash records. That sounds reasonable. We are checking the cash records by doing the bank reconciliation. D says a waste of time. And uh, it's probably not, we're probably, as accountants, not going to say it's a waste of time to reconcile. And then E says poor internal controls. And uh, a bank reconciliation probably is going to add to the internal controls, so I think it would be good internal controls. So just by the process of elimination, I think we're pretty basically left with C here, which says protecting assets by proving the accuracy of cash records. And that's kind of what we're doing here we're basically double checking the cash records uh, by a third party the bank to double check the activity that has happened thereby getting a better uh, understanding of cash which could help us to protect the assets so that sounds reasonable let's read it one more time question and answer preparing a bank reconciliation on a monthly basis is an example of c protecting assets by providing the accuracy of cash records next question the three parties involved with a check, A, uh, writer, cashier, and the bank, B, maker, uh, manager, and payee, C, bookkeeper, payee, and bank, D, signer, cashier, and company, or E, maker, payee, and the bank. So once again, we'll go through these and see if we can eliminate some of these options with the process of elimination. Question is, the three parties involved with a check. Now this is one of those where we might want to think about the three parties first before going through these because it could get confusing as we go through these. I mean, if we think about writing a check, we've got, we've got the company or the person that's writing the check. And then um, we're going to have who we're writing the check to. So maybe the vendor that we're getting the check to. And then of course, within this transaction, helping us out is the bank. So you would think that, you know, those are gonna be what's kind of involved here. It's usually we're paying someone, that's an A to B transaction, but we have the person that's helping us process this information, the financial institution, that being the bank. So A says the writer, the cashier, uh, and bank. Now that seems uh, uh, like it, it possible because the cashier is someone within the company. So we've got the writer of the check and then the cashier. It sounds a bit repetitive. I, I'm not sure if that's going to be everything. We don't see um, the vendor. B says the maker, the manager, and the payee. So that's going to be the person, I guess, making the check and then manager possibly supervising the check is how we're thinking of that and the payee. But I don't see the bank involved here and that seems pretty crucial. I would think the bank would be in there somewhere, so I don't think it's that. C says it's going to be the bookkeeper, the payee, and the bank. So, I, you know, it's kind of possible, but, but I'm not sure if the terminology is right. I'm going to keep that for now. D says the signer, 
the cashier and the company. So the signer uh, and the cashier and the company, it all sounds like kind of the same entity. It sounds like those are all on this side. We don't see the bank or the person we're writing the check to. So I don't think it's that. And then it says the maker, the payee, and the bank. And that, from a most kind of broad standpoint, is sounds pretty good because we got the person making, the payee, and the bank, which would represent our three areas here. So I'm left with A, C, and E. We've got the A saying writer, cashier, and the bank. C, bookkeeper, payee, and bank. E, maker, payee, and bank. Once again, the question, the three parties involved with a check uh, are going to be A, writer, cashier, and the bank, or bookkeeper, payee, and the bank, or maker, payee, and the bank. Now, A seems a bit kind of repetitive with the writer and the cashier, um, so I don't think I don't think we have a payee there. It's kind of the problem. C, uh, bookkeeper, payee, and the bank, and E are going to be similar in, in the process. I think the, the difference between these are that the bookkeeper is a really kind of broad term. Uh, if if we, we're talking about any check, uh, it might just be an individual writing a check. And so whoever the maker of the check is, whether they be a you know the bookkeeper or a company or whoever is responsible for writing the check, this would be a more broad characteristic. So I think for that reason, E would be the better choice. So once again, the three parties involved in writing a check, E, maker, payee, and bank. Next question. Account used to record cash overages and shortages from petty cash transactions. A. Cash gone. B. Bank reconciliation. C. Petty cash. D. Cash over in short. E. Cash receivable. So once again, we'll read through it, cross them off with the process of elimination. Account used to record cash overages and shortages from petty cash transactions. A. Cash gone. I'm, I don't think that's a thing. That's, that, that's, that term doesn't sound familiar to me. B, so I'm going to cross that out. B, bank reconciliation. Uh, that's going to be a bank reconciliation is the process of reconciling from the bank to the books, but I don't think that's what we're looking for here. C says petty cash. That's the fund we're looking at, petty cash, but it doesn't tell us what account we're going to go to for the over and short. It's not going to go to the same petty cash. And D says cash over and short. Uh, that seems reasonable uh, because that would be the over and short account. E says cash receivable, and that's probably not going to be the case because what we're looking for is when the cash is not lined up to what happened on the uh, on on the cash. In other words, the cash receipts register doesn't line up to the actual cash we already received. Doesn't mean we're going to get more cash or less cash because the difference has already happened. We just have to record that difference between what has been received versus what uh, was recorded as cash sales and, uh, and that will get in the cash over in short. So D looks like the answer. Once again, question and answer. Account used to record cash overages and shortages from petty cash transactions. D, cash over in short.